Hi, everyone. So, I guess in honor of 4th of July, which is the day that I'm filming this, I decided to do a special video about, well, the place where we kind of learned about history and all of that. So, what could I do that would fit my channel? And I decided to do top 10 school animes. Now, what I mean by school animes could be completely different than how other people will consider and actually base their listings off of. This list is basically all these animes mostly take place in school or a school setting. So e even if the main character is not a student, they can be a teacher, any other kind of faculty member, it could be a parent. However, the majority of the anime has to take place in a school. And it doesn't, I don't care what the genre is, if school is listed under there, or if the entire place is in a school, it will count for this list. So, unfortunately, there's one show that I wish I could add, but I cannot, for the other reason being. I wanted to, apart from it being in a school, no one cares about what the plot is, I wanted to focus on how much of the school elements are involved. That includes tests, field trips, drama with teachers or other faculty members, even school rivalries, or club rivalries. So, shows that are about a club, but there isn't a lot of school activities, that will also count. But, for certain shows, like Danganronpa, which people may argue, hey, that takes place in Hope Peak Academy. Yes, it, it technically does. However, I looked into it. It's not under a school category, but there really isn't anything that shouts school from it. It's really kind of a clue mystery than it is school. So, um, unfortunately, if we were talking about um, Danganronpa 3 Despair Arc, that will count, but that is not on my list. So, well, there you go, a Danganronpa series somehow qualifies, did not make the list, oh my god. So, without further ado, we'll jump right into it, and as we go, I will try and give you as much knowledge of the show, if you want to watch it instead of having to attend school you can just watch other people attend school and see how they go throughout their life so for our first honorable mention we have Tanakakun wa Itsumo Kajur wow I cannot talk or better better known as Tanaka the Listless. It's a slice of life show and it's about the student Tanaka who basically um, that's a little bit better. I'll probably be changing from different uh, lighting so that you can see a little bit better but it's about a, a high school student named Tanaka and he just wants to be listless. And basically, he doesn't want to interact with anyone. He wants to sleep everywhere. He doesn't want to do anything. But people always kind of want to bother him and get him out of his lazy life. His friend, um, Ota, is basically kind of like a protector for him, but also basically kind of helps him out throughout his life and he's always there to protect him and the relationship is so cute and 
it's kind of, his friend group is almost something that you want to have. I definitely want to have. I want to go to their school every time. I should really do a school place list. This school will probably be up top. It is fantastic. Oh my god. I... Every episode that I have watched with this, I've... I have said how much I wanted to do... Like, wanted to go there. Because of how cool everything looks and how calm everyone is. So... There... If I'm not mistaken, I think there's a dub for it. There's definitely a sub... It came out, oh god, I don't remember if it came out in either the sp spring last year or of the fall last year. It came out sometime last year, and I watched the show when I actually was trying to sort myself out. And I was just struggling a lot, and this show really helped bring a, a lot of life and humor back to me. And it kind of reminded me why I like anime, which is a weird statement in itself that me, someone who does a anime-based channel, and will go through lengths to try not to ruin myself with reputation of anime. We'll say how I almost completely lost my own touch when it came to anime. And at times I still do feel that and that's in, in a situation like that, I try to rely on anime more to help me out. And this is one of those shows where I couldn't not put this on the list because it helped, it helped me out a lot. But why is it an honorable mention if I like it so much? It takes place in school, yes, of course. It has classes, some activities... But, I feel that when it came more on the schooling side of everything, it was not as much as that. But it was very close to being on the major list. And there's another show that I didn't even make a slide for that almost got on the list. I can't remember if it did, I don't think so. Uh, whereas, uh, The Disastrous Life of Seki K. And it's one of my favorite shows. I love it. And it takes place in school, but it was more based off of the comedy level that I really didn't feel like a school connection to it. So that's why I kept that one off the list. So moving on. Number 10, we have Clan Ad. A very popular show that, well, it's still popular, but it aired in 2007, so 10 year on, <laughs> it's coming up on the 10 year anniversary of Clan Ad, which is going to be in October, and I will probably be doing something for that, because this show also did a lot for me, and I'll explain why, but for people who do not know what clan that is. Um, Tomoya Ukasaki, I hope I said his last name right, he's a delinquent who really doesn't see anything good in his life. He doesn't believe he can amount to anything because his father was also like a deadbeat. So he really kind of lays around, doesn't really like anything, his only friend Tsunahara, who he, who he will hang out with, and he basically kind of wastes the day away, he then, on his way to school, he passes a girl, and the girl basically catches his attention, and she is Nagisa uh, Furukawa, 
and that she is like a young girl and she claims that they're friends. He doesn't. But basically, after that moment, uh, Tomoya finds himself getting caught up with Nagisa in all of her pla like all of her plans because since she was uh, sick from a illness, she had to stay back a year. And because of that, she wants to really live the high school life because she really doesn't have anyone now since all her friends are kind of gone. So basically, she tries to start a school drama club and he decides to help her and he soon interacts with four other girls who is uh, also in the shot um i can't remember their names off the top of my head but basically as the story goes on you we get to see the love story of tomoya and nagisa and it became so popular there is now apparently a movie and a sequel and this show is sad it is so sad i cannot make it through after story have yet to i've seen five episodes and it was i don't know how i got through the first season because i shows like this isn't really my forte because I, I can seriously cringe at, I cringe, not at, like, gore or anything, I cringe at when people embarrass themselves, and there are a lot of cringy moments in shows like these, where, if it's, like, a confession, but it just goes horribly wrong, I always, like, cringe, because I'm like, I don't want to see a mess up, I can't see this mistake, and also, if uh, people argue... And there's just a fight. I just cannot do it at all. Because of the fact that I do not want to see anyone embarrass themselves. So to have a show where a lot of that happens is high on my cringeworthy level. But Clan Ad, back when, when I got into anime, it was... Um, it was a few years after Clan Eye came out, and Clan Eye was a jumping point for me when it came to me trying to figure out what I liked. I knew how big Clan Eye was in the community when it came out, so it, it was like a three or four year difference when I started anime watching, so... It was like three years after it came out, and I don't know when after, uh, after Story came out, I'm assuming a few years later than what Clan Ad did, but I wanted to, yeah, it came out the year after, so it, yeah. <laughs> I can't think, oh god. I'm, I really don't want to say anything really spoil, spoilery. This was one of those shows where it, it first I got introduced to the confusing side of anime. Since if <coughs> ah, if you don't know Clan Ed, there's like this weird side story in the middle of it. Not in the middle of every like the show but it's like it'll pop in here and there like a girl and a robot and that starts the confusing process of the entire show and by the time you finish both both series everything gets way more confusing which is something i don't like i do not prefer supernatural however when it came to deciding does this fit for a school life yeah it does because it has people dealing with their test scores, clubs. It has one of the more important but also tragic elements of someone missing school from an illness. 
there are people who go through that, like, all over the world, where they cannot attend school because of an illness, and they have to somehow make it up. And all these, all, the entire cast has tragic parts of their lives. So, to have all of them try and struggle with school, and especially the person who is sick, and also with Kamoya, how he's a kind of a social outcast. It's interesting to see where everything goes, and I'm kind of surprised that there aren't more people who know about Koenad, since newer, like, people who are now getting into anime, some people don't care to recognize anything about older anime, they only care about newer ones. So, for anyone who's looking for a gem with the school, but also wants drama, romance, supernatural, slice of life, and comedy, this is something that you want to see. If you know Angel Beats, it's going to probably, you're going to probably like it. Personally, I haven't seen Angel Beats because I know it's a tearjerker, and I also don't like to cry in my animes. But it's the best thing I can come up with being similar. And also the studio that does it has done so many good shows. So I say check it out. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, then... There, uh, I don't know what to say. Number 9. Baka to test. And... This, I saw the show on Netflix when it was, I don't think it's on Netflix anymore. I think they took it off. But this is also another gem that is kind of hidden. And I'm surprised if anyone actually knows what it is. So, basically what Baka to Test is, it's Akahisa Yoshi. Or the stupid one in the class is the main character. He is the only other full body person in the shot. This one. And the school that he goes to is basically divided up into different classes. So class A is the upper head and... Class F is the lowest class. It's kind of like assassination classroom with that, where testing scores go with everything. However, the difference is the different classes that you're in will also affect every how you're taught, because Class A will have reclining seats, will with air conditioning, and everyone's so great. Class F, your desk is I think a crate and you have to sit on the ground if I remember correctly <laughs> and or mats you have to sit on mats that's it and basically during their testing period the other girl in this shot uh, Mizuki Hajime I think that's how you say it is basically someone who is one of the smartest girls in kind of his entire class, but because she has a fever on the day of the big test, she was automatically put in class F. And basically, it's a whole story about um, Yoshi and his adventures with his friends. That also includes his, like, uh, friend Yuji, who's the class president, and is, like, a good friend of Akihisa's, or Yoshi. I'll just say Akihisa, because it's easier to just say that than Yoshi. Now, the school, with the little creatures, everyone has a fantasy creature. The school 
basically kind of had like a experiment going with them where your little creature kind of represents you and you have powers and they fight with you because different classes go up against each other and with Akahisa's his is a rare one because if his little guy gets hurt, he will also get hurt. Everyone else, no, it's completely different. And his little creature can actually interact with things in the real world. Because once they go into battle, everything goes a little more digital. Wise is like a arena, and the little creatures attack each other. And their creatures, if I'm correct, they're stronger based on test scores. But it can kind of also reflect on everything else. So, this show is high with comedy. I I think it's hilarious, and it's, it's definitely in dub, and I watched it in dub, because you have the main character who doesn't know that his cute friends are in love with him. We have someone who cross-dresses but not because he wants to, he's kind of forced to do cross-dressing because a lot of people think that he is a female, even though he has a twin sister that people don't kind of believe is a female. We have the hot, the hot guy of the class who somehow caught the attention of a girl in A who's like the kind of like a dark, can also be really cute and will sneak up on you type. And then we have the pervert who just takes pictures all the time. I think Greg Ayer is, is him, I can't remember. But this show is high on the comedy level. But the fact that the, the way the anime works is based off of classes, grades, different... Going up against classes to get better and smarter, technically. And doing like school activities is why I put it on the list, and also just by how much I enjoy it, and I think this show also got me more into school anime, which is probably why I have it on the list. There are two seasons, I have yet to do season two, just I haven't really had time or interest to do season two, I think season one ended on the best note possible, in my opinion. So, if, if you like comedy and kind of also the tech, the technology side of everything, and the little creatures, this is the show for you. Number eight, Wolf Girl and Black Prince. This is something that was never supposed to be on a lot of things. Anyway, this show, I originally hated it, did not like it at all all and yet somehow I keep going back to it there is something about it that I love and I read the manga and it's now great I don't know it's about Erika Shinohara who lies to her friends about having a boyfriend and when they ask for a picture of him she just takes a picture of a random guy in the streets ends up being the most popular and the kind-hearted kid of Kyo Sata, of her class. When he finds out, Kyo basically kind of agrees, however turns into a sadist, a mean sadist, and tells Erica that she has to be his dog. And basically, Erica accepts, but soon sees him in a more evil light of being the mean spirit and the um hateful sadist that he I can't I'm sorry. I wanna laugh so hard because I know how this all ends. And I just find it funny the <laughs> I just find it funny the way that he's like first introduced. It's so funny. But um and she's basically the wolf girl for him and he'll be the black prince for her. Oh my god, and the only one- <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I just 
find it funny talking about it. Because I just love it so much. I I shouldn't, but I do. But the only the only one that knows about her secret is her best friend, who is in uh, Kyo Kyoya's class. While everyone else really doesn't know about this, and throughout the series, it shows the development of the relationship. And also the feelings that the two have for each other, along with trying to get past their own struggles. I do not approve their relationship in the beginning. I hate it, actually. He can honestly be a creep to her. However, there's something about it that kind of make is kind of some like realizing that some people do go through this. But why I put it on the list? is it does it focuses a lot on the classmate friend development and the schooling wise and i think i kind of put it more on the list when i thought more about the manga and how a lot of their actions do take place in school and with testing and all of that i thought as a fun class-rich environment where it focuses more on the people than of the school and all of that and really clubs. I thought this was pretty well done for the environment. It's hard to say why exactly I put it on the list because I feel like it's a show where you should watch it yourself to really understand why it should be placed or a school anime. And I'm, I'm just going to move on or else I'm just going to keep laughing my ass off. And I really don't want to do that, especially because the next one's actually going to be a little more harder to under, like to explain to some people. Number seven, Hayaku. This is the, on the only sports anime on this list. I had a hard time thinking about if this should be on the list. I also decided if this or uh, Wawamushi Pedal should be in its place because both both of them focus way more on the club, the sports club aspect where we have high schoolers who really care about their sport and will do anything for the school team, and this is basically where they want to be, where they belong. But when it came down to which one would represent the topic more, I went with Hayaku, since with Wild Mushi Pedal has episodes where they are in school and all of that, it basically focuses a little a little bit more on the sport while Hayaku does have some elements of them in school walking around, getting to know each other, some of the other classmates, field trips, and I just feel like the, the environment of how they all interact with each other in school works much better than the other one. So Hayaku is about a volleyball team, Ace, that, well not an Ace, but Hinata Shuyo is watching volleyball and the Ace, the little giant, appears and he realizes he wants to be him, the new him. And he is in love with volleyball. His middle school team goes up against this big team where he meets Tobio Kageyama, or the king of the court. And after losing to him, Hinata vows that he's gonna beat him one day. And they become rivals. He then decides to go to the same high school where the ace was. And as he goes to join the team, he sees that his rival, Kageyama, 
is also there. And because Hinata is short in height, and Kageyama is really tall, but is the setter, the two kind of have to work together in order for their, their team to work. And this shows about a volleyball team wanting to surpass every other team. It's very plain and simple. Not too hard. But it's, it's actually lovable in a way where people who don't really like sports will get a hang of it and will understand. When sports shows, especially in anime, they want to explain how certain rules go and what's happening. Because if you don't, or people who don't know what's going on, you're not going to understand. And I usually skip certain action scenes, including games like this. This is one of the only shows where I actually watched everything from beginning to end because I wanted to know what happened since during the games a lot of personal things had happened so this show can be really serious actually really depressing but going along the lines of how much they all care for each other and how much they care for the team is something that it is kind of hard to find where everyone's almost on the same page. And I thought that the show was special for doing that. Uh, okay. Number six. Uh, say I love you. I'm just going to say I say I love you. This show is really all about school. I don't... There's very few episodes where it's not in school but this show is here basically for the romance in school there's no other way to say it this show is my number one pick when it comes to finding out what a school romance should be and I can't remember how I watched. This was also one of those cringeworthy shows I was talking about where there were a lot of moments where I'm like, I just can't just because of the topics were actually, the topics were really deep and something that you don't normally see in either anime or in real life in general, general means people will not talk about it. But the show is about a girl named Mai Tachibana, and she is kind of like an outcast to the school. She doesn't really have any friends, she doesn't really want friends, and she just doesn't really trust a lot of people. One day, a, um, Uh, one day, there was a misunderstanding between, uh, the guy in the shot, y uh, Yamato Kurosawa, and her when she thinks he's looking up her skirt. And she kicked, like, roundhouse him, like, in the face. And he tries to be friends with her. But Mai really doesn't want to do that. However... After saving her from a stalker, she starts to actually fall in love with him, and soon everything is mutual and they start dating. However, the show talks more about how, as they're dating, how hard it is to date someone, especially if you don't really know what you're doing, and how they're kind of like in different class sets. So, it's really interesting, since I relate a lot to Mai in her character, and how I kind of not fully understand how she feels, but I just about can relate to her. And not her desperation for friends, but 
for wanting to have a life that she wants to have. But the romance of the show in general is, in my opinion, one of the best ones I've seen in anime in general because of how much they're both equally caring for each other, wanting to make sure that they're on the same side or something. And it basically, it shows the reality of what dating can do to someone, which I think is important for some people to see. And a lot of people can probably see the show, watch it, and immediately feel like this is what they want their love life to be. Sometimes it doesn't really go that way, but some people can dream, can't they? Um, so the next one that I have is going to be another honorable mention, and it is The Daily Life of High School Boys. I am not going, going to attempt to pronounce the name, the Japanese name, because it's just not going to go well with me, but it's a slice of life anime about three high school boys that go to an all-boys school. Um, Hizunori, Yoshitaka, and Tadakuni. And it's really weird on how they're friends because I don't really see them being that good friends. Especially since the majority of the show is two of them kind of mocking the other one. But it's basically about their life. If you know Nietzsche show, that show is this, but this is all boys. And this show is hilarious. Oh my god. I don't think I've ever laughed so hard at things than this show. Uh, and I keep trying to get people to watch it and they're like, oh, we're gonna get to it. I just don't really agree with the episode lengths. Even though I feel like a show like this, the episodes might want to be a little bit shorter than they are since it's not really plot driven. It's just what happens in the show with, uh, like snippets. I, I don't know the actual name or really what it is, but the reason why the show is not, like, on the top ten list is basically because of the fact that it takes place at school, but it doesn't really have anything to do with schooling a lot. I think they have the school festival, their ending song. The ending and opening is actually really fun. I really like them. But when it comes to naming a show immediately that I think of when I say name a school show, this is not it. I'm sorry. It's just... It, the next pick is gonna probably be the weirder one out of everyone than this. Because it will be another. And... This is probably, I can't remember all the shows that came out during the year of 2012, since this show came out in the winter of 2012, but this is one of my favorite shows of that year, and one of my favorite horror shows, and I like it so much I got it on DVD, and it was an, it was a error to do that the price, but it was it's a great show, I'm not gonna lie, because for anyone who is a big horror person, you're gonna love the summary. In the year 1972, a popular student in the class of 3-3 named Misaki passed away, and after that, the town of Yomiyama was kind of struck with a fearful atmosphere. 
15, like 26 years later, 15 year old uh, Kochi Saka, Sakaki Bara, Sakaki Bara transfers into the class of 33 of the same school and discovers that there is something strange going on in the classroom. He is drawn to the mysterious eye patch wearing student, Mai Misaki, but the other kids and the teachers don't treat her like she is someone that's actually there. And everyone tries to warn him to stay away from her. However, even even Mai herself has told him to stay away from her. But he doesn't really care, but as he gets closer to her, there's he starts to learn about the truth of the gruesome ph phenomenon going on in the class of 33. And the story will follow Koshi, Mai, and their classmates as they try and put the end to the series of in 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 of tragic events and trying not to die. Because the whole the whole concept of the show is that by ignoring her, the class is safe. But because he's talking to my everyone basically starts dying. And this show is big on the mystery aspect, the gore aspect, and I got really sad when there were certain characters that died that I didn't want to die. Some of them deserved it, though. Absolutely, some of them deserved it. <laughs> Not trying to sound rude about that, but some of them did deserve that. But, um... This show does have aspects of school field trips, tests, class scores, and the big mystery surrounding the class. So... The reason why it's on the list is, even though half of the series takes place in the school, half of it takes place while on a school field trip, the fact that it's, it's still a school field trip, grades and teaching is involved, and the whole premise is about the certain class of the school that something will happen, that... I thought it was interesting, and also because uh, Kochi is also someone who's sick and has missed some schooling because he's sick. He suffers with a heart condition. So, kind of going back to the Clanad aspect, where Clanad has like kind of like a mystery, a sick person. This show does have a huge mystery, a sick person. And death. <laughs> so, there are some comedy elements, and I have a weird sense of humor, so some horror actually does make me laugh. This show can terrify you. It also has a manga and a novel. I have the first novel. I think there are two novels. Or two parts of the novel. I have the first one. Read the manga. The manga and the anime are completely different. And if you want to read the manga, you can read the manga, go ahead, it's actually kind of short, and also the fact that some characters change between the two, and it's one of the only times where I actually will say I prefer the anime over the manga, and if you watch, watch this and read that, you'll completely understand, and you may actually agree with me. The show is in dubbed, but I, I would say go watch it in subbed, because in my I think Greg Ares does Kochi in this show, and his voice to me ruins the character completely. So I say go watch it in subbed if you want to see dubbed. You can do it afterwards, but I think everyone should give this show a chance. But if you do not like gore. I suggest to go look up a list of death scenes because the first death in the entire show 
almost made is the worst one in my opinion, and it almost made me gag. Now that we get that fun stuff out of the way, let's move on to number four. Now the rest from here are ones that I think focuses a lot more on kind of schooling than it is with the other categories where you have like sports and relationships. Except for one of them, but Gwakusen. This is probably the oldest one on this list of 2004. And it is one of my favorite shows and series of all time. And it has a live action TV sh series with multiple seasons. There's a manga for it where I'm trying to read all of it. I just haven't had time to actually read. And then you have the anime, which is great in dub. Do it in dub, it sounds so much better than it does in sub. But it's about Kumiko Yamaguchi is a brand new teacher, a math teacher, who wants to start at a academy, an all-boys academy, but it's a delinquent academy. And she realizes that because of all of that, they don't really care about schooling or anything like that. However, she doesn't really care. She... A lot of teachers, a lot of female teachers, would probably quit, not want to go back, but she can handle it with her dorky facade that she has. But she's actually part of the powerful Yakuza clan. And probably the next runner up to take over the clan but she wants to teach instead and in order to do that she has to keep her gangster life a secret but some of the students including Shin Sawada starts to realize there's something up with her and since he's the class of delinquents everyone follows what he says so she has to somehow get everyone to not find out about her life, but also she has to figure out how to deal with teaching, and especially with how to control these boys. I love the show because it's from the perspective of a teacher, and sometimes in anime we don't fully get that, where, yeah, the main character is a teacher, but... The lives of the girls, girls, students, can almost take over the show. And we have, there's a new one out called My Royal Tutor. I haven't fully watched it yet, but that's also a show about where you get the perspective of the tutor and trying to teach these, like, boys how it would be more proper. And with this... It's more focused on her life and the people around her, and seeing her try so hard to be a teacher is inspirational, since even though she is a part of the Yakuza, she does want to try and help these kids learn and actually pass and go on with their lives, but the fact is, they don't really care about themselves that much, they would rather just be lazy and hang back and not really do anything but with her own encouragement she she's able to help them out and even have someone fall for her and it's I I love the relationship that she has with her own students and it's a show that one is very inappropriate, do not show anyone under the age of 17, please, I made that error, but it's a show that I think everyone should see if you want to be a teacher, because there are some dark subjects and parts of the show where you can almost relate to either the teachers or to the students, or in some cases, the other Yakuza members. Since they're not bad guys. 
Well, the ones that we're supposed to be following aren't bad guys. And make you want not to join the Yakuza's, but to realize they're not bad people. They're just misunderstood. So, or anyone who, who feels like they need kind of like an encouragement of why they should become a teacher, check this show out. It's really good. And it's not a long show either. And if you like it, then there are so many spinoffs and you can actually see the end of the students' journeys in the manga. The next one is something that a lot of people don't know. And people get surprised when I talk about it because they don't think that, um, and they don't know of it. Meganaboo! And I have talked about this show before. It's one of my favorite shows because I relate to everyone so much. And the story basically revolves around five guys wearing glasses who go to an all-boys school who are in the glasses club. And their whole mission is to create x-ray glasses. That's it. But... The knowledge about glasses, the fact it takes place in a school, there are club fairs, school examinations, it's about a club who has a rivalry with the student council, who also apparently all wear glasses, or some of them wear glasses, it's weird, or wear contacts, uh, whatever, but it's a show filled with comedy, and there are actually, like, some really satin, like, heartbreaking moments. However, if you wear glasses, you're going to relate to everything way more, since everything is about glasses, and I love it, and I can't help but feel happy every time I see it, and I kind of want a, a second season, even though everything ended up perfect, but I just want more of the boys, and oh my god, it's so great, I would check it out. I know that doesn't do the explanation of school anime well. However, it's better if you just see it and you'll understand what I mean. Also, there's a whole episode that's like Jumanji, but with glasses. And I think everyone should try it because there are so many like cultural references in there. I'm so sorry if I'm going fast. I'm just running out of time. Number two, Kimi ni Toke. One of the infamous, more famous school animes that everyone knows of because of... The main character, the love interest, the school life in general, because it's basically about a outcast who everyone thinks she looks like the girl from the ring, but she's actually really adorable. She wants to help everyone out. And all these these people kind of make fun of her. But when she interacts with the most popular guy in school, who I can't remember his name, uh... He starts to fall in love with her, and kind of like the opposite as well, they both fall in love with each other. Then she makes friends with the two other girls who are in the shot, who are like friends with each other, but they're also kind of like outcasts because they kind of do their own thing. And I, if you know the show, have seen the show, this character right here, I relate to her way more. You want to know how I am? That's who you want to talk to, or you, that's who you who you want to watch, because that is one of the characters in anime that I relate to the most. So if you want to check it out, or more the romance, making friends, trying to fit in school, that's this is the show for you. Wow, I really rushed through everything, but if I didn't, I wouldn't have enough time to talk about number one and. When it comes to school animes and everything like that, it should be easy to tell what's my number one school anime. Or on High School Host Club. And I, this is one of my first animes I have ever seen. And this is a great starting point for people who like anime because it's the balance of weird and not weird. 
because it's about Harui Fujioka, who ends up going to Oron Academy, the school of the rich, where rich people who have way too much time on their hands decide to go to the host club, who are rich, handsome young men who have way too much time on their hands and decide to go and flyer women. Harui breaks a precious vase, and because Harui only got in on a scholarship, has to now work for the host club, and is soon found out that Harui is not who he says he is, but is a female, and now has to work as a host to cover her debt and to keep her secret, or else she has to to be more girlish, and that's not what the host club really wants, but this show has it all. Even though it takes place a lot with a school club, there is things in, involving grades, school festivals, dances, raising money, beach trips, um, graduation, making friends, this show has it all when it comes to not what school actually is, but it's really a show about what happens when you have kids in all different classes and also characteristics and social classes mixed together to have a group and that are friends. And it basically best represents your own group of friends because you can easily point out who is who. This is the same for a lot of the other ones on the list where you can easily pick who would be who in your friend group and can easily relate to them. And when it comes to school, everyone wants to go to Oron Academy to see this certain club. So I hope that I easily explained everything. I'm so sorry for the rush rush at the end. I just had to hurry it up just because I'm running out of time. But if you enjoyed my 4th of July special, please like and subscribe. Leave me a comment of any of your favorite school animes. I would love to find new ones to watch since it's one of my favorite genres to do in anime. And, as always, please like, subscribe, leave a comment if you like what you're seeing. We have, or well, I have put up new videos involving new gaming content for the game EVE. If you have not checked it out, go ahead, see how you like it. We have more on the way. We also have another game on the way. And it will probably already be uploaded. So, why don't you go check it out? And of course, we will have more content for Life is Strange and other videos that you love to enjoy. So, of course, as always, I will see you guys later. See ya.